So today we're going to be talking about how we're going to describe functions. You'll notice yesterday's lesson was titled Identifying Functions, right? So first we have to figure out what a function is, what a function isn't, right? That's why in yesterday's notes we looked for repeating x values or repeating inputs with different y values, right? If we had a graph, we looked for two points that were directly above each other, right? And vertically in line with each other. So today we're going to be describing them. So we've got four terms we're going to be using, and they should all be fairly familiar terms to you. Um, let's talk about the first one. The first one is proportional. Give me a thumbs up if uh, that word sounds familiar to you in this class. Good. I would hope I see everyone's thumbs. We talked about proportional relationships for weeks. Even the week I wasn't here, you guys were talking about proportional relationships, right? And a proportional relationship, when graphed, is going to look something like this. So this is what our proportional relationships look like when they're graphed, right? Something like that. And let's make a couple notes about this. If we have a relationship, and actually I should start saying functions, if we have a function that's proportional, it must be linear. Right? Being linear is half of what a proportional relationship is. What's the other half of a proportional relationship? Do we remember? It's got to go through the origin, right? Through the origin. And when we have something that goes through the origin, we know that our B must be equal to what? Zero, right? Our Y intercept's got to be zero if we intercept at the origin, just like that. Okay, nothing new just yet. Should all be familiar. And then here are a couple of examples of what we might see. We may see y equals 2x, y equals negative 1 half x, anything like that where we've got a number in front of our x or, I mean, we don't need a number in front of our x. We can also just have y equals x. But what we're missing is our y-intercept being added on to the end, right? Whenever we see an equation like this, with seemingly no y-intercept, we should know immediately that's a proportional relationship, right? What would the opposite of a proportional relationship be? A non-proportional relationship. That's our next term, non proportional I'll move this down and non-proportional graphs are going to look something like this now non-proportional graphs can look a lot of different ways Right? We're used to seeing something like this. Right? Looks really, really similar to our first graph, but what's the big difference? Azalea, what's our big difference here? It does not go through the origin. This line crosses the y-axis at some point. We call that point B, right? So non-proportional relationships can be linear or not. So we can have linear non-proportional relationships and we can have non-linear non-proportional relationships. We'll take a look at both of those here in a minute. And we know that all non-proportional relationships do not 
uh, cross through the origin. And from that, we know that B is not equal to 0. So that equal sign with a slash through it means that those two things are not equal to each other. So some examples of non-proportional equations that we may have seen. Uh, well, they're the most common equation that we see, right? Like y equals 2x plus 1. Because our b value does not equal 0 here, we know that this is non-proportional, right? This equation does not pass through at the origin. We, omit, we may also see something like y equals negative one-half x plus four. Okay, just because it's a fraction as our slope doesn't change anything about our problem. It's totally fine that our slope is a fraction. In fact, we want our slope to be a fraction. The next term that we're going to use to describe functions is linear. And we're familiar with this term as well. The reason why I'm going through this pretty quick is because this is all review. This is all information that we know already and should have. Brandon, we're not even in class, buddy. Okay. If you need to, just step outside. That's fine, but we're not even in class. Uh, a linear relationship is going to look like this when we graph it. I'll go ahead and draw a full graph here. So a linear function may look something like this. Or it could be sloping downhill. Or it could be horizontal or vertical. Those are all still linear functions. Linear functions are always going to be straight lines. And this is a new way that we're going to identify whether something's linear. Linear functions have no exponents in our equation. No exponents in our equation. This is where things are going to get a little bit different now. All right, because we're going to start seeing uh, equations that we normally would see, but with some exponents. And we'll talk about that with the next one. So some examples of this may be, I don't know, y equals 3x plus 2, y equals 4. OK, that would also be linear. It's just a horizontal line, right? And then we have the final descriptor here. Opposite of linear would be nonlinear, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. No, we're going to talk about uh, one little rule we're going to use, and then we'll be done. Can I use the back of my Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, okay. So nonlinear relationships may look something like this. If a linear relationship is a straight line, then a nonlinear relationship is going to be a not straight line. Something maybe like this. 
You guys remember when I drew this for you on Monday? Yeah. Or Friday? I don't know. All the days are the same to me. So nonlinear relationships are not a straight line. Pretty self-explanatory. And we know that we have an equation that's nonlinear when we have at least one exponent in our equation. at least one exponent in our equation. Well, what's that going to look like? It's going to look exactly like this. It's going to look like y equals x squared plus 1. Or y equals, I don't know, 3 minus x squared. Something like that. What if you did that on the turtle thing? Uh, put an exponent? No. Oh, it would have been fine. The turtle would have just went down and then back up. Yeah. Now, when we have something that's nonlinear, right, like this, does anyone know what this shape here is called in the light green? A semicircle. A semicircle. Very good guess. It's definitely, it definitely looks like half of a circle. Starts with a P. Anyone know? Close. This right here is called, go ahead and write this in, a parabola. Okay, so we've never heard this term before, definitely. A lot of people say parabola, right? It looks like that when you read it out loud, but that's because we're conditioned by the English language to misread things. Parabola. Okay, it's a parabola. Parabola. Everybody say that word with me. Parabola. Okay, that was close. Close enough. Parabola. Parabola. Okay, so a parabola is just a U shaped graph. Now, parabolas can also look like this. Yeah, parabolas are always nonlinear because they're not a straight line. They're curved. Now, parabolas may also look like this. And this is where things get tricky, okay? Because these two parabolas look very similar, but they're very, very different, okay? That's right. This one looks more like a U. This one looks more like a C. Now, when we look at both of these, we may go, okay, I see that those are both nonlinear. They must both be functions, right? But that's actually not correct. This right here is not a function. You don't have to write this down. We're going to write our notes in a second. I'm just explaining. This graph of a parabola is not a function. This graph, however, is a function. Yes, it is. If only there was a way for us to determine. Noah, do you think you have an idea as to why that might not be a function? That's right, exactly what we talked about yesterday, right? And when we saw the circle with our turtle crossing. This parabola has two points on it with the same x value, right? So we have repeating inputs with different outputs. That's how we know this is not a function. Noah? It, it, it's okay for it to be for like the y. Yes, it's definitely okay to have repeating outputs, right? And uh, let's go ahead and write this last thing. It is called the vertical line test. 
Okay, don't worry about it. Worry about the notes. Don't worry about whatever's going on. Okay? Vertical line test. It's a very simple test to do. It's not as hard as the tests I give you, I promise. All we're going to do is, well, let's go ahead and just write it down, then we'll talk about it. So go ahead and copy this down, and we'll take a few moments, and then we'll talk about it all together. Okay, Kenny, I need that. So this sounds kind of weird. Um, it's not a typical math procedure that we would do. But to see if a graph is a function or not, all we have to do is drag a vertical line across our graph. Okay? If two or more points line up, it is not a function and I'll show you exactly what this is going to look like in a second just make sure you get this copied down Hopefully you got that copy down. So let's take a look at how this vertical line test is going to work. Now keep in mind, this only works with graphs. If you've got an equation, you're going to have to take a look at all our other explanations we just went over. So this is only for graphs, okay? Let's take a look at this line right here. I'll move this out of the way. Or I'll keep it in, in sight. Let's take a look at this graph right here, this pink linear function here. If we want to determine if this is a function or not, all we have to do is take a vertical line, which I'll give you guys rulers once we actually get down to working with this test. You'll have rulers, that'll be your vertical line. You're going to start on the left. Okay, you're going to start on the left, and you're just going to drag this vertical line across our pink line. And we're looking for any point on this line where we have two pink points on our graph. Do we see any repeating points here? No, we don't. So this graph passes the vertical line test. We know that it is a function. But what if we have something like this, like we just saw in the notes, right? When we have something like this and we start on the left and we drag that vertical line across our graph, what happens? What do we notice? If we have this vertical line here, we're dragging it across our graph from left to right. Do we only see one point on our pink line? No. no. Everywhere we go, I see two points. See how these two points line up vertically? These two points line up vertically. So do these two. And we can find an infinite number of points in between that all have the same input with a different output, right? That shows us this is not a function. 
Okay, let's take a look at something we just saw with the turtle crossing, this graph here. Anyone remember what happened when we saw this graph? Yeah. yeah. What happened? Oh. Right here, at this point, the turtle split into two. What happened over here at this point, though? They came back together. They came back together. Let's take it, let's do the vertical line test and see. So far, so good. We've got a function, we've got a function, but as soon as we hit right here, now we've got those two points with the same x value. And as we go through, we see that we've got tons of these points, in fact, an infinite number of these points, that all share the same x value, right? But then once we get to the end of our circle, we're back to a straight line. So overall, would you say this is a function here or is not a function? Give me a thumbs up for it is a function. Give me a thumbs down for it is not a function. What do you guys think? Good, I see all thumbs down. This one would not be a function as well. However, last one, if we have a parabola like this, right? Facing upwards like a U, not like a C. If we do our vertical line test, is there any point on this graph where we have those repeating x values? No. no, and there never will be. These two lines will go up and up and up forever, and they're never going to have two points with the same x value. That shows us this is a function. All right? Okay. Any questions about the vertical line test in particular? We'll talk more about it once we get to our real work today and yesterday or more background building uh, for the work that we're going to be doing Wednesday, Thursday, and next week. I have two.